Hey YouTube, Adopted Mike here. In this video, we're going to take a look at this ASRock 970 Extreme 3 motherboard. This is based on the AM3 Plus socket by AMD, and it is 8 core ready, as well as compatible with Windows 7, and it's a 9 series chipset there, obviously, with the 970. Take a look at the side of the box here. Got some specifications in some different languages. It's a pretty standard ASRock box. And we got some, uh, here we go, 4 DDR3 at 2100, 2 PCI Express at 16, Gigabit LAN. Looking pretty good there. 5 SATA 3, 1 E SATA. USB 3.0. This board is pretty well loaded, all right. Gonna take a look at the back here. There is a shot of the board, which we'll get to in a little bit. Going through the specifications and pointing them out. A lot going on, but let's get. Oh. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did that, didn't we? We talked about. Yep, it was. Uh, yep, 2100 uh, DDR3 memory, and that would be 32 gigabytes that it would support. So we have a software setup guide here. Then we have the motherboard manual, quick installation guide in different languages. We have the driver disk, but it's always best to double check online, make sure there aren't new drivers, and there probably would be, I would guess. Here is a colorful rear I.O. shield, so I always like this when they get away from that uh, plain old silver. Okay, here we have two SATA cables, the 6 gigabit kind. One is a right angle, and the other is straight to straight. Now we'll take a look at the board here. So, there's the board. I always have been a fan of the ASRock look. I uh, just like the way they don't have a lot of colors going on. It's mostly blacks, grays, or at least the boards I have. I know they do have some more colorful boards, but I just uh, definitely like the way their Extreme Series looks. Here's a look at the back. It's kind of a dark brown PCB. So, let's get on with it. We'll start at the bottom corner. We've got our high-definition audio front panel header there. We've got a SPDIF HD for the HDMI. We've got a COM port there, We've got the IR1, USB 2.0, USB 2.0, and then we have another USB 2.0 up there. Here's our front panel connectors. Then we've got the 5 SATA 3, 6 gigabit a second that we talked about earlier on the front of the box. There is a chassis fan, a, another chassis fan that's a 4 pin header, first one was a 3. Moving along, we have a power fan with the 24 pin power. Then we've got our four DIMM slots that will run up to 32 gigs of RAM. And you can hit a clock of 2100 plus, is what it's claiming. I am not going to attempt to verify that. Then we have a CPU fan header and a three pin CPU fan header. A chassis fan header that's a three pin. Got our 8 pin CPU power there. We've got a nice heat sink there on the power delivery for the CPU. And there's another nice little heat sink there as well. And that looks like it rounds out our fan headers. Sometime we find one in there, but it looks like we've rounded out the fan headers. Now I'll take a step back. There's our socket AM3 Plus socket there, ready to rock and roll. And then we'll go down to the slots. 
so let me get a little better angle here okay so starting off here we have a PCI Express by one and we have another by one down here and then we've got two legacy PCI slots here and these two PCI Express by 16 slots they will work as a 16 and a 4 this one is only wired up to here so uh, it, yeah it will definitely take a bigger graphics card but it's only going to operate at a quarter of the bandwidth sometimes that does have an effect on graphics cards uh, I've seen before where people have done 16's and, and 8's and the 8 doesn't hamper it too bad but sometimes that 4 hampers it you know a decent enough amount that it may may think twice if you're buying this exclusively for a crossfire setup you may want to take a look at a 990 series which I believe has a little more bandwidth here for a second graphics card I, I'm not a hundred percent sure of that but I think it does but the 970 definitely is going to run a 16 and a 4 not the end of the world but it does make a little bit of a performance hit there on the secondary graphics card but if you're only going to run one like I would always recommend anyway you're good to go with that slot there at 16 so let's take a look at the rear I.O. Starting off on the left, we've got the PS2 keyboard and mouse. We have a coaxial and optical audio out. We've got gigabit Ethernet, 1, 2, 3, 4, USB 2.0. We've got the eSATA there. We've got a USB 3.0. There are two uh, there on the rear. And then we have the HD audio out right there and one thing I guess I did not notice is it appears that we do not have a USB 3.0 header on the board which is too bad more and more cases now are supporting uh, there's our speaker CMOS jumper but more and more cases are supporting USB 3.0 on the front panel it's kind of a shame to see that this motherboard does not support that unless you have the pass-through which looks like hell in my opinion but I guess in a pinch it would work so with this board I would definitely be wary of uh, getting a case with front panel USB uh, 3.0 because you won't have the connector there unless you get one of those um, you know it, it converts a it converts a 2.0 um, 9 pin there to a 19 pin or 20 pin 3.0 uh, you won't get the speeds but at least you can get the connectivity to where up front it will still go and, and plug into one of those up front rather than just not having uh, USB ports up front anyway this will wrap up my unboxing and quick look at the ASRock 970 Extreme 3 motherboard. Again, this is the AMD chipset, the 970, supporting socket AM3 Plus CPUs. And as always, thank you for watching.